through this program, through these guys, they have allowed me to sit and process and think what has hurt me, what is healing me and what's making me me and accepting me for that. And I feel accepted in this group more so than the 35 years before that I thought that I was in groups, but I've never felt like I was a part of something that mattered and felt like I was gaining strides from that. And it's all praise to God and praise to this group of men that won't give up on me and haven't given up on me in the 11 weeks that we've been in this program. Hey, my name is Drew Boa, founder of Husband Material, where I help men outgrow porn. Today, we are talking about triads. That's kind of a weird word. You may be wondering, what is a triad? And if you've been part of the Husband Material community, you've probably heard some people talk about their triad, or hey, would anyone like to form a triad? What's that all about? How do triads work? And what can you do to form your own triad? That's what you will learn tonight. Specifically, you will learn from me and some of my students and my friends who are in triads that have been super life-giving and healing. You will get to hear directly from them about what's working for them and how it's helping them to heal. But first, what's the story behind this whole triad thing? It starts with my own frustrations. When I was beginning to get into groups and I would get really excited about having an accountability partner or two, and then it would inevitably fizzle out. And we would grow distant and grow apart, or maybe I was gaining a lot of progress and the other guy wasn't, and it just didn't work very well. Sometimes I would get frustrated hearing about other people's stories. And this whole accountability thing, it just wasn't working very well. So I tried all kinds of things. And one of the things that I tried, which actually worked out really well, was instead of meeting as pairs within a small group for deeper connection and supporting each other, we met in threes. But I don't want to call it threesomes because that sounds too sexual. So we called it triads. And this triad model actually had a number of benefits. And so in all my small groups that I lead and in Husband Material Academy, and in what I recommend to people in general. Rather than choose one person to have this mutual support and prayer and confession and affirmation and going deep together, instead of choosing one person, try two or maybe even three. We have some triads that ended up with four people, uh, a quad or a squad, you might say. And you will get to hear from some squads later in this episode. That's the story of how triads formed. I am not aware of other ministries or programs out there that specifically use this triad model. It seems rather unique to husband material. And here are some of the benefits that we've found, that I've found about setting people up in groups of three. First of all, there is less pressure on one person to be there for you. For example, if you are triggered in the middle of the night and one of your triad members is married and has kids, might not be available. Another one of your members is single and he is totally okay with being woken up at the middle of the night. Or let's say you have one triad member who is in one time zone and another who's in another time zone. There's less pressure on one person to be there for you. You can call them both. There's also less pressure on one person to meet all of your needs. If you're concerned about being too clingy or too needy, having a triad allows you to spread out some of the weight and some of the support. It's also a little bit safer because it's very easy for one-on-one -on -one relationships to become inappropriate. But if you add another person in there, you have a group of three, then there's a little bit more safety built in. Also, having a group of three is still small enough that it's easy to form. All you need to do is find two people. You don't need a full small group of six people. And it's small enough for plenty of attention and affirmation. If you meet with your triad and you have three people in there and you meet for 60 minutes, then each person has 20 minutes 
to share if it's split up evenly. Or if you meet for two hours, each person has 40 minutes. Now that's a long amount of time. Each triad has to define how long are we gonna meet for and, and what are we gonna do? But it's also small enough that you can connect with each member of your triad individually as well every week. I like to think of triads as like a triangle. And you know, triangles are small. If you know about engineering, a triangle is the strongest shape. It's the strongest structure in the world. And I like to think that maybe it has something to do with the Trinity as well. We believe God is one in three and maybe, just maybe, our triads mirror that. And when I think back to some of the closest friendships in my life, they have formed in threes. I'm thinking of John and Antonio when I was in third grade, or Ben and Adam as I was going through college and graduating, or even right now, Lane and Andrew in person here in Santa Barbara. We're a triad. So that's why we recommend triads. A triad is simply a group of three men. Simple as that, a group of three men. And in this context, a group of three men who are going deep with each other and supporting one another on the journey to freedom from porn and healing sexual brokenness. Here's my first question for you all who are with me live. If you are in a triad or something similar, what are the benefits? What are the benefits to you of being in your triad? Austin says consistency. I think that's a great one. It's a little bit easier to stay consistent when you know it's a group, when it's not just one person that I'm meeting up with, but it's two people or three people and we have a set time and we have a structure. Having that consistency is key. Chris says, in my triad, I'm not alone. I have community. Scott says personal contact. Victor says they are there for me. Mike says accountability in relationship, right? Accountability, not in terms of the porn police trying to control your behavior. Accountability in consistently showing up and being able to see you and to know you deeply. Austin says, you're forced to actually talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In a larger small group, sometimes it can be easy to hide. So in a group of two or three or four, you can't hide without everybody else knowing it. Arlen says, not so much pressure for one man to meet all of the other man's needs. Yeah, that's what I've experienced too. And here's a quote from C.S. Lewis from his book, The Four Loves, that really captures something profound that I find about having a smaller group of three or four rather than just a single friend. He writes, in each of my friends, there is something that only some other friend can fully bring out. By myself, I am not large enough to call the whole man into activity. I want other lights than my own to show all his facets. Isn't that true? That in each of our friends, there is something that only another friend can fully bring out. And Lewis experienced this personally. When one of his close friends died, he felt like a part of another friend died as well. Because who we are comes out in different ways with different people. So with my friend Ben, he brings out a side of me, and then Adam brings out a different side of me, and then Adam brings out a different side of Ben, and Ben brings out a different side of Adam. There is something wonderfully Trinitarian about that. And that's some of the beauty that I love about a group of three. Let's get practical. If you would like to form a triad, how do you do that? I'm gonna give you three steps, three very simple steps. The first one is to choose your what, your course, your curriculum. We talked about this in our recent episode on healthy male friendship. If you wanna go deep with other men and really form strong friendships, you have to have a common goal. You have to have direction. So where should you go? What should that direction be? One great course you can go through is Husband Material Academy. Or you could go through a book like Unwanted by Jay Stringer or Redeemed Sexuality, my own small group workbook. It can be very simple and cheap. Just having a structure of reading a chapter every time. Or in the case of Husband Material Academy, watching a video 
or a few and doing the action step in between meetings. That's going to give you a foundation and a basis that your group can come back to. So you have to choose your course. You have to choose your what. Maybe that course is not even specifically related to sexual brokenness. That's okay too. Sometimes triads need to shift depending on where we are at in our individual journeys. And if it all becomes about the heavy duty lifting of processing our childhood pain all the time, that can become discouraging. So find your course as a triad, find your rhythm, find what would be the best thing for you right now. And I highly recommend having a program so that you can have direction and a common goal. Step number two is to choose your when. Very simple. You have to choose that time to meet. And I'm going to say that you will want to have a scheduled plan and a spontaneous plan. So your scheduled plan would be, for example, meeting every week on Zoom or in person for one to two hours. And this meeting time, by the way, is not the most important part of the triad. I like to think about it as the huddle versus the game. If you think about a sports team, when they meet up in a huddle, in football, American football, or soccer, or hockey, when there's a timeout and the team gets together, they huddle, they talk, they strategize, they connect, and they get ready to go out there and play the game. If they have a great huddle, that doesn't mean they're a great team. That means they have a great starting point. What really matters is how they go out there and play the game. So if you have a really great triad meeting or a really great small group meeting, awesome. Realize that that's not the measure of a successful triad. The measure is how you go out there and play the game together because so many times our small groups split up after our meeting and then it's like we're playing the game as individuals for the rest of the week. That is why so many of us continue to experience defeat and discouragement because we're going to the huddle and feeling like we're a group, but then we're playing the game alone when it's 2 a.m. and we're feeling totally triggered or when it's 4 p.m. at the end of a long work day. I mean, that is when our triad matters the most. That is when your small group and your men need to be the most connected to you. It's not during the meeting. It's easy to stay safe and to be vulnerable during the meeting. What's more difficult is outside of the huddle. When the opposition comes, that's when we need each other the most. And that's when we need to play together. So what I'm saying is the meeting is important and it's just the huddle. You got to go out there and play the game together. And that's why you need a game plan for spontaneous meetings as well. You got to set your expectations for when are you available for a phone call or a video call? When are you not available? That's really important because one of the biggest obstacles to men reaching out for help is feeling like, oh, I don't want to annoy this person. I don't want to be too needy. Maybe it's an inconvenient time for him. Maybe he's in the middle of work or maybe he's asleep or maybe he's with his family. There's always an excuse to think of the reason why the other person won't want to talk to you. And when we can schedule out, all right, this is my availability, as well as this is my desire, like how often would you like to talk? We need to, we need to actually go into these topics when we form tribes and when we form small groups. Like what would feel like too much? If I called you, at three o'clock a.m. Would you feel honored by that? Or would you feel annoyed by that? Because our default will be to assume that the other person will be annoyed when in reality, it might be the greatest gift. Some of the greatest gifts to me are when someone is courageous enough and brave enough to reach out for help in their time of need. That's a blessing to me. Yes, it's a blessing through me to answer that call, it's also a blessing to me because it's what I want. So set your expectations for spontaneous communication, availability, desire, and you need to talk about 
those times of the week or those times of the day when you need connection the most, when you are most likely to feel triggered. When you think about those patterns of when you've acted out sexually in the past, usually there's a specific time and there's a specific place when you're susceptible. That is game time. That is when the team needs to play together. That is when you need your triad. So as you form your triad, first of all, choose what you're gonna go through, whether that's Husband Material Academy or a really strong book or workbook or something else. And then you gotta choose your times. Choose your times when it's most important to connect, when you're most available to connect, when you most need to connect. And talk about your desire for how often you want this to happen and what kind of conversations you'd like to have. The last thing is to choose your format. For the huddle, for those scheduled meeting times, people structure it differently. Every group has their own culture that they create in a meeting. In my old small groups that I used to lead, we used to sing a song at the end of every meeting. And it was a cheesy song and it didn't matter, but it just brought us all together. So we'd have our arms around each other like this and we would sing this song. I got my mind made up and my heart is set and I'm going with Jesus all the way. He's got his mind made up and his heart is set and he's going with Jesus all the way. So that last part was what the entire group would sing and then each member would go around and individually sing. And, oh, it was so good. You know, having those kinds of rituals can be so helpful. So that was part of our format. We just closed with that every single week. In my private small groups that I lead online right now, one of our rituals, one of our things that we do for format is in a 90 minute group meeting, we have three men share and each one gets 25 minutes in the hot seat. The hot seat means it's your turn to tell your story or to talk about a sexual trigger or to unpack a sexual fantasy or to share one of your divine desires. Um, that's what we do in our private small groups and it's really powerful because it allows you to go deep immediately and it gives everybody else a chance to listen and to love. So that's the format that I use for my private small groups. It's also very similar to what we do inside Husband Material Academy, having that hot seat model. So that's another idea for how you can structure your meetings. You also need to choose your format for spontaneous meetings. You can use WhatsApp. That's one of my favorites, especially because it's international and it allows for voice texting, videos, all kinds of sharing all around the world. So WhatsApp is a favorite one for me. Some people really like Marco Polo. When it comes to meeting as a group, in order for attachment and attunement to occur, it's really critical to have real-time communication, whether that's on the phone or face-to-face. -face. Video conferencing is even better. You gotta choose your format and figure out what works for you. Now comes the fun part. I wanna give you some real life examples of what husband material men are doing in their triads. I will share three different stories. One is from Ismail Gomez, who lives in London, England, and is leading a triad within Husband Material Academy. And this is what he says about how they run their triad. There are three things that we do on a weekly basis. Uh, we have a weekly meeting via Zoom. We have calls, one-to-one -one calls in the week to one another. And also we form a WhatsApp group where we can post messages. Sometimes it could be a prayer request or a video or just message, oh, I'm triggered, is someone available? Um, being part of HMA. And I think we, we are beginning to gel well together. We can, we're beginning to feel more comfortable with one another. We are practicing on one another to give good feedback and to share and to be positive and to be affirming and 
affectionate and also that has been noticed noticeably making difference in we are sharing more in the whatsapp group and also with the phone calls so everyone feels quite comfortable and, and quite happy or we're always looking forward for our meetings on on fridays well there you have it i love the way that ismail does both a meeting as a group and individual members connect with each other on the phone so they have multiple scheduled meetings per week to keep that connection strong not just in the huddle but staying connected throughout the week during game time and also that they have whatsapp for asynchronous communication which just means even if someone else is not there we can still correspond the members of ismail's group also wanted to share a little bit about how the triad has been helpful for them. Sean said, it has helped me heal by giving me a place of vulnerability and safety where I can freely share my struggles without judgment or fear. Clarity for my own addiction often comes when I hear someone else describing theirs. Sergio said, our squad is fairly diverse with members in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, I think. Some of us are married, some of us are single. This has brought a diversity of wisdom, experience, and knowledge that has really elevated our conversations. Feeling safe has done wonders for our ability to heal. Some of us have never told anyone about these struggles before until entering into this group. Rick said, I can be specific in my sharing and not once have they judged me. I feel comfortable with this group because this has become a safe place to begin opening up about my sexual brokenness. I also like the genuineness of the squad, checking in with each other and communicating about other items in our lives. Friday mornings with my squad has become a priority. I don't want to miss it. So you can see this is a group of four men. And if one of them drops, then it will become a group of three men and still maintain that close knit community of structure and support. Now, all of this might sound really good, but the reality is sometimes triads don't work out. And when that happens, I want to give you a new phrase. Triad, triad again. If at first you don't succeed, triad, triad again. And here is a story from Mike Chapman, who formed a triad after his first one didn't work out, and some other guys who were in the same position. And here's what they had to say. What do triads mean to us? Um, I was in a triad. It didn't work out. Uh, and I knew I still wanted to be in a triad. So I started over and started a new triad and got a hold of Victor and Jason. And the three of us became a new triad. And then after a few months, uh, Nick joined us as well. And I know he'll share part of that. It's been so helpful uh, to have this group of brothers I can call on uh, if I need to. And we meet weekly. But just having these people who I got to know them, they get to know me, and they have truly become brothers. Um, and it's been awesome. We all have our ups and downs, but I know I can reach out to them and they can help me and I've helped them. And it's just really been awesome. Um, so um, I'll let these guys share too. Victor, go first. Uh, well, this is uh, my first triad, Mike invited, and uh, I appreciate it so much. Uh, I wanted to be part of triad as I heard the, through the material that there is triad and it's recommended and blah, blah, blah. I've never been part of one and I want it. I uh, am the type of person and, uh, that I never reach out first normally. So I kind of like sitting and waiting and wishing and uh, I was praying. And uh, I didn't dare, so I got invitations. So Mike dared for me. <clears throat> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I met Jason. Uh, I never met him before. And uh, later on, uh, John Nick joined us. <laughs> That's the nickname for him <laughs> of mine. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so uh, what I like about triads is uh, that we... Uh, regularity is there one uh you can count on that another thing is uh, you can count on really as a, on a close relationships uh that uh during the time you share you get to know more and uh, 
we talk about anything and everything like and we have such a small group that we have flexibility and freedom to to really do that and that's great and of course just the setup is of a trust and uh, and it's uh, it's just like it's phenomenal uh it's easy it is super easy for me uh in this group like i love these guys and uh i had a luxury to actually meet up with Mike one time <laughs> and, and the presence of another guy and the standing at was uh, actually very touching. Um, if, that's, if that's possibility, that's great. If not, online is absolutely great. And, and then you can call each other anytime, <clears throat> really, and, uh, and reach out and connect and, and chat and all in a, in, in, a, in a probably somewhat intimate group in a way. Hey guys, Jason. Um, I guess for me, there's actually several things. Uh, this is my first triad. It's helped with accountability, com community, um, dealing with anxieties, um, staying in the middle of the herd, and which helps me with trying to not be the, a lone ranger. Helps me push through my anxieties, like in, anxieties of talking about things you don't really want to talk about. Um, anxieties with uh, being on video because um, in addictions uh, isolation can be a big part of life so it's hard to either see people in person or on video and then um, yeah it's like biggest thing is just a sense of community and accountability and just uh, flexing our muscles with the things that we struggle with thanks guys Thanks, Jason. I want to add with one thing with what Jason said. Yeah, you can't hide your feelings very well on video as we see you and you are seen. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. It's like, no, you're not. Because we can tell we're looking at you and you're not. So, but that's okay. We still love you and we'll support you. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to be seen. How's it going? My name is Nick. Um... This, this, uh, the tribe thing was definitely something that threw me for a loop when I first got into husband material. I didn't kind of expect it. Um, but it's definitely been such a amazing and challenging, um, part of the program. Um, for me, I actually was in a triad before and it didn't work out very well because we just weren't the right kind of people for each other, uh, to be able to support each other. And yet I also think, you know, some of those differences were also like good for us too. And so like, I learned from that, like, don't be afraid to like, A, just like voice, you know, is this working? Is this not working? You know, all that stuff But B also just to be able to be brave enough to say, you know what, like, um, I need to work on myself or this person might need to work on themselves or something. So there, there's just a lot of like, um, stuff I learned from just going from one to another, like I'm having to be on the journey of learning how to be the right guy for these guys you know, but also like be able to accept the fact that I can't like fix these dudes or anything. Like, it's just, it's more of a support. It's a loving um, relationship that, that is going to like, I'm just trying to, to seek these guys' hearts out and propel them forward. And, and I think they do the same for me because um, my heart has definitely been sought. It's been seen. Um, it's been embraced. My story has been embraced. And I think that that's, that's the benefit um, of, of this is the fact that you can't hide and that's a good thing. Um, and so, you know, there will be conflict that arises. There will be um, joyous times. There will be uh, times where you want to like completely dig run away from people, you know? Like, I know I struggle with that, like what Jason was saying. Um, but the thing is, is like, without this, we can sit here and, and really think to ourselves, like, I can do this on my own. That's just simply not true. Uh, you can't heal on your own. I can't heal on my own. It's just impossible. So like this has just been such a ben beneficial yet hard um, part of the process, but it's definitely been something I've needed. So I'm very thankful for it. And uh, I hope to continue to, to love these guys as well as I can until I end up moving on and becoming an actual triad with two other people. That's kind of the plan because uh, I feel safe with these dudes and, and, and they've done a lot for me. So. Yeah, thanks, Nick. I think uh, what Drew has said in the past of uh, the key to recovery to healing is connection. And there's no better way to get connected than to be with a group of brothers uh, in a triad or we've got a quad triad 
Uh, and it's been awesome. It's been a blessing. So find yourself a tryout. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much to everyone who just shared. Guys, stick with me. Stick with me because uh, I am going to, first of all, I'm going to share some of the things that you guys were saying about maybe something that's working for you. Oh, man. Will is saying that brought tears to my eyes. That's so amazing. Praise God. I hope that you're beginning to sense a bit of the beauty of brotherhood that we're working on building here at Husband Material. And one of the things Victor said was that he got to meet up with Mike in person. And we actually have in-person triads as well. And now I want to invite two members of an in-person triad in Minnesota to come on the call and share a little bit about that. So let me uh, let me get that going and we'll see if we can make this happen. Yeah, oh, well, what's up? Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're doing we the, do boa. the boa. We're doing the boa. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. You guys got boas, feather boas. <laughs> We have, when we do the boa, we breathe, we observe, and we attune, we, we attune, we attune, we attune with the boas. That is so fantastic. In case all of you are wondering, what is that? It's just a simple technique uh, when you feel triggered or dysregulated. Breathe, observe, attune, B-O-A. It spells the letters of my last name, and I just feel so loved and honored <laughs> that you guys would wear feather boas. We love to laugh. Yeah. And we walk through a lot of pain. So I wanted to start a group. I've done Husband Material Academy, and I would write out my homework, and nobody would ever reply. And if a man speaks in the woods, and there isn't anybody to hear him, did he really ever say anything? So one of my huge triggers is not being seen and not being heard. And so to redeem myself, I wanted to start a group of guys and working with broken people with celebrate recovery. I said, I want to start my own study with men. And I put a feeler out and these three gentlemen came along. They, I have an anxiety or an, an angst with zoom. I have a love hate relationship that, uh, I don't think you're real until I at least give you a hug or a handshake or something. And so I want to bring some people in. And I found these men, they not necessarily like to be on an app. They don't necessarily like to do that. And I'm kind of the same way. I do it because I have to. And so we got together and we bonded the four of us into a group. And no other better way to do this was husband and material. I said, I've gone through other step studies. I've done other things. And this is the best. Would you do it with me? And so they followed along. And we are in week 11 tonight. And we've gone on a huge journey together and we've cried and held each other and walked through it. And so, well, I feel like it's an honor to be invited in to your triad tonight. Can you guys introduce yourself so we know who you are? Yeah, I'm Chris. Um, I have chatted with you before. Yeah. And 11 weeks in, I, couldn't see myself being anywhere else on Tuesday nights and with these guys. So I'm Luke. Um, you know, I, I actually knew Larry from a, uh, from another, uh, group from several years ago. Um, the guy on my right here is, was, was part of that too. And it just, it wasn't very safe. It, uh, it felt like a lot of purity culture involved with it too. And there was, it just, it didn't really help, you know, bring growth to my life and it just kind of dissolved. Um, the one thing that I find very helpful with having a group like this with guys that get you is it really helps dissolve that toxic masculinity that it, you don't have to, you know, be vulgar and do all the things that we think guys should do just to be accepted and, and loved and, and part of the group. Um, having these guys around me has been amazing. Uh, I'm Marty, and what I would 
just being a part of this group is being a part of a group of men who know me, know everything about me, and love me as we do for each other. And as has been stated by those who have spoken before and what you drew said in that we have a weekly meeting on Tuesdays, we call each other, we have a group text that goes around. And because we live in the same community, we get together. I mean, these guys came out last weekend and spent some time <clears throat> out of my place and we hang out, we laugh, we watch movies, we play games, and they know everything about me. Right. Come hang out with me. And we grow and we heal that way. And again, being in the same community, this guy called me at work because of something with his work. And so there's a connection in addition to the connection that we have because we live life together and we cross paths where we live. And that's really powerful. So you've been able to balance the serious with the silly. And I love even seeing that with feather boas around everybody's neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we laughed really hard about it the first time we talked about it. <laughs> and then Luke ordered them on Amazon. So perfect. I think I need to get one. <laughs> oh, we have some extras. We can send. Oh, we'll send them. <laughs> perfect. I'll give them out at the celebration retreat. So I think what's worked well for me has been the consistency um, and the accountability, but the, the safety feature of where it's just safe. You know, we, I, I can talk to these guys about anything and not feel judged. You know, I look forward to Tuesday nights. Or when I talk to them, because I know that they're going to accept me and they're going to affirm me and challenge me and encourage me, regardless of what's going on. And I trust them. I trust them with things that are not doing so well in and things that are doing well in. So, you know, if, I, if I'm struggling with my marriage or I'm hurting from my family not being there for me, I can trust them with that. And I feel comfortable enough to go to them and say, will you be there for me? And, and calling, you know, Larry at four in the morning, I can, I can trust and know that he's there, that he will pick up the phone and, and answer and talk and listen to me when he should be sleeping, but he's there for me. The boa, the breathing, the observing and the tuning is, is really helping me heal, uh, calming down. I'm very fidgety, very outgoing, very movie and through this program, through these guys, they have allowed me to sit and process and think what has hurt me, what is healing me, and what's making me me, and accepting me for that. And I feel accepted in this group more so than the 35 years before that I thought that I was in groups, but I've never felt like I was a part of something that mattered and felt like I was gaining strides from that. And it's all praise to God and praise to this group of men that won't give up on me and haven't given up on me in the 11 weeks that we've been in this program. So beautiful. Well, I'll say I'll add to that too. Um, what, three weeks ago or a month ago, I had a pretty significant event take place that was really uh, depressing and disappointing in along this journey. And I texted these guys, it was Tuesday, and I texted and said, I, I'm just going to stay home. I don't feel well. And this guy showed up at my house and knocked on the door and uh yeah larry sat down at my kitchen table and i just said i i think i led with i don't know what to say and then just the floodgate of words opened as i started to process and talk and through the vulnerability of sharing and, and being together in the same space we got up and left at the same time to come here to be together where then i was able to share with the other guys what was going on um, which is exactly what I needed, not to isolate, but to be together. And because you guys had already formed this deep community, it was there when you needed it. That's right. Most important parts of group development, uh, they say that it starts with forming, and then you go through the stage of storming. You have to have some kind of conflict and some kind of challenge to overcome as a group. The point is we need to go through that storming stage to get to a place of truly feeling safe with each other. Because until then, it's it can be fragile and it can feel like, oh, I don't want to make a mistake or else what's going to happen? When we make those mistakes and we have those ruptures and repair, then we can have a secure attachment and know that we can depend on each other. And then that also opens us up to have fun and play. Um, 
And you guys, you guys went on a little adventure, right? To a lake. Yeah. Anyways, we stayed at my local cabin and uh, we stayed the night and laughed and played games and boated and just had a good time. And just men were we men. Before now, male friendships, even when we had them, felt fake. You know, they there was all these you know expectations and there was that toxicity that you get when you have those you know the ideas of what being a man looks like and i feel like we we've been able to form real solid friendships that even you know heaven forbid for some reason this group had to dissolve away from hma i feel like we would still be friends we would still be connected we would still be reaching out and doing this because we have grown to love each other and to accept each other. And we want these friendships and we want to be close. We want to have community right here. So we have people in our lives that no matter what's happening, we know that they, they got our backs and that we're just going to be there. I think that's, that's a huge thing for me, having a group that I, I can say, these are my friends, not my, just my group. They're my friends. And we want to be with you. Yeah, we yeah. Enjoy your company. <laughs> yeah, I've always felt like, you know what, I'm not good enough. I've got all of these things. I've had friends just bail on me. I don't feel like these guys are going to bail on me. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh. So if each of you could choose one word to describe the result of this group you've been able to form, just choose one word, what would it be? Belonging. Safe. Beneficial, vulnerable. And all that we're really doing here at Husband Material is trying to create a space where that can happen and where we can meet those desires in healthy ways. Last week, we talked about healthy male friendship and why that's so important and how we can develop it. And now we're getting really practical into what that can look like. Thank you all for showing us a vivid picture of healthy male friendship in person. <laughs> Thanks so much. I love the boas. Thanks, Cheryl. Jason says, I love this. I want this. I am starting a group in my church in September, and this is so helpful. In some ways, this is what we all want. This is what we need. And if you right now feel like you are longing for that kind of community, that kind of brotherhood, I'm going to tell you three ways that you can take a next step toward that. The first way is just kind of dipping your toes into the brotherhood in the community, and that's joining the husband material community. This is a free private place where Christian men outgrowing porn can meet each other and we have a feature that allows you to find people in your local area, even if you're trying to find people in person. You don't have to be part of a program to go through a process like this and to get into friendships with other guys. Joining the husband material community will allow you to connect with some different people and see if someone or a few people might be a good fit. If you want to go a little bit deeper maybe waist deep and get into a triad and have us help you form one here at Husband Material, then join Husband Material Academy where we will match you up with other new students and help you form a triad online. And if you want to jump all the way in and do a cannonball and join a private small group where I will be your leader, or another certified husband material coach, then you can apply to join husband material small group at husbandmaterial.com slash group. That is a higher commitment and it's a higher cost and it's a higher level of trust because you know that every single person who's joining that kind of group has been meeting with me, I've given them the green light and they're ready to go deep for a set period of time so that we can help each other heal and reverse the curse and live a new story, a story of belonging, of trust, of safety, of vulnerability, and ultimately freedom from porn and sexual wholeness. 
So those are some different ways that you can start a triad. If you have a question that you would like me to answer, go for it. Carmen says, it's definitely difficult to do a triad with others in a different time zone. Yes, it takes intentionality. One member of Husband Material Academy, Justin, lives in Italy, and he found a triad with Thomas in Spain and Joe in Chicago. So he has one member in his time zone and one member who's quite a few hours behind him. And actually, that works out great because he says that when it's midnight or 1 a.m., and he's really needing to talk, it's dinner time for Joe and he always loves a call. So it can be difficult and it can also be a blessing in other ways. So it takes intentionality. That's one of the reasons why it's really important to schedule meetings so that you can plan on it and work with each other's lives. Jay says, an obstacle that I've been facing is finding other guys willing to commit. I've met several men wanting to be allies, but none willing to commit to being in a triad. That can be really frustrating, really discouraging. That's one of the reasons why it can be so helpful to join a private small group because when people are investing in it more financially, they're much, much more likely to commit. I found that in the paid groups that I lead, there is a lot more commitment than in the free groups that I've led. Because as one wise man said, when we pay, we pay attention. So I realized that that might sound salesy. It's also one of the most powerful ways that I found to develop community is to do it with other men who are fully committing, not just in word, but with their actions. And sometimes paying to be a part of a group can do that. And in many ways, as we're trying to form these kinds of groups, as we are figuring it out and seeing what works and what doesn't, it's a dance. We're learning to dance, we're practicing together, and we are, in that way, imitating the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who have been dancing together for eternity. So what's your next step? Is it joining the community? Maybe it's joining the academy, or maybe it's committing to a private small group where men are fully invested. Whatever it is for you, I hope that you are able to find that close Christ-centered brotherhood that we all need. And always remember, you are God's beloved son, and in you, he is well-pleased. Mm -hmm.